Hello YouTube, it's PSU Gaming Scotland here and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are well and gaming lots. So in today's video we'll be looking back at the Game Awards 2020. I'll be giving you my thoughts of some of the announcements, a couple of the awards and my overall thoughts and feelings of the show. So before we get into the video, let me know if you watched the Game Awards 2020 this year. It was quite late for people in the UK and Europe. It was early hours of the morning I believe. I've stayed up to watch it and here are my sort of highlights and a recap of the show. Show. Let me know if you've watched it and let me know what you think of the game announcements and a couple of the, the awards that I'll be talking about today in today's video. So yeah, let's get right into it. So the first announcement we got was Evil West. Looks to be releasing in 2021. Take that with a pinch of salt. So it's a zombie hunter game set in the Wild West. It looks to be very gory and over the top, very action packed and it just looks quite fun. So next up we had the Castillo Protocol releasing 2022. I don't know why they're showing it off now, but hey ho, it's a PS5 game from the Dev Space Creator taking us into one of Jupiter's moons in the year 2320. So this looks incredible. Now, it's very similar to the sort of backstory of PUBG, it's very connected to that universe, it's in the same universe, but yeah, it looks really interesting, very gory, very sort of horror, sort of space vibe I'm getting from it. Looks intriguing, definitely. So next up, we have Season. This looks to be a visually stunning indie title with a charming narrative experience from what the trailer looks like where you travel around the world on a bicycle it looks obviously visually stunning and obviously I think something major happens and you've got to try and collect artifacts and memories before that big event happens don't really know much about it but from what I've seen and read that sounds really intriguing so next up we have Evil Dead the game so it's a co-op zombie shooter it looks very similar to Friday the 13th Dead by Daylight that sort of co-op sort of zombie shooter vibe I'm getting released in 2021 one at the moment. Dev is the World War Z dev, so they have previous with zombie games. Next up we got Ark 2, so the dinosaur hunting combat game returns. It's got a really good star studied cast, Vin Diesel, Elliot Page, David Tennant and Russell Crowe and probably so many more people alike. It looks very sort of Horizon Zero Donny. I'm getting that sort of vibe from the game. It looks really interesting. We also got a new Mass Effect game now coming off the butt of Mass Effect Andromeda. That that game didn't exactly go to plan, very buggy, but yeah a lot of people still liked it so we'll, ha we'll obviously see how it, the game turns out, no release date for that one. Next up we got It Takes Two, so It Takes Two is a co-op platformer only game, so if you remember a few years back at the Game Awards, Joseph Fares from Hazelight Studios, the creator of A Way Out, well he's back with It Takes Two, so it's a co-op only platformer where there's a few by the game, you can invite your friend to the game and they get access to the whole game free of charge which is really excellent especially during this time of obviously we don't know when this is releasing if you've played a way out you'll probably like this it's different sort of story and more sort of cartoony but yeah i really can't wait to play this game because a way out was excellent got a review on the channel from a few years ago i absolutely recommend a way out you have to play it with somebody else and it's incredible really quite straightforward platinum as well if you know what to do and we also got back for blood releasing june 22nd 2021 so it's a left for dead special spiritual successor from the original dev Turtle Rock did the Left 4 Dead so it's good to see them finally making another zombie game so it was quite zombie sort of shooter focused couple of indie titles overall okay not the best game awards I've seen in a long time but yeah I'm just pleased that we got new announcements I was hoping to actually see Silent Hill or other sort of games that were heavily rumoured as well but obviously we didn't see that but yeah hopefully they are still real and hopefully they'll be re releasing very soon so yeah Overall, the awards, okay, pretty expected. The Last of Us got a lot of awards. Laura Bailey got Best Performance for playing Abby. Now, obviously, if a game makes you feel that the way The Last of Us 2 did, obviously her performance was stellar, it was excellent. I just didn't like the structure of that game. Ghost of Tsushima got the Player's Choice, which is fantastic, obviously. Really good for Sucker Punch. And obviously, The Last of Us Part 2 got Game of the Year. Now, obviously, that's subjective. A game that makes you feel awful after playing it is not really one for me but in saying that apart from the story The Last of Us 2 is very controversial and a lot of the other elements on the game are fantastic like the gameplay, the open world, sound design, accessibility options, everything was excellant apart from the, the structure of the story, the way it was told.
people, their writing, etc. So yeah, so obviously let me know what your Game Awards thoughts are down below in the comments section. That has just been a sort of highlight recap of my thoughts on it. Overall, pretty disappointing. It's okay, to be honest, not as good as previous years. But yeah, I'm glad that we have the opportunity to celebrate the gaming industry through awards and game announcements. And I really like watch these events, especially during this time of year. Want to try and end the year on a good positive note. But anyway, guys, that has been the end of today's video. Let me know your thoughts below. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I've been PSU Gaming Scotland and I'll see you on another video. Thanks very much indeed, guys. Bye-bye.